Thank you for the opportunity to present selected key findings of this year's emissions gap report. In line with the previous editions, this report updates the emissions gap, which is the difference between where global emissions are projected to be in 2030 if countries fully implement their nationally determined contributions and where science tells us they have to be to have a likely chance of achieving the Paris Agreement temperature goal. This year is particularly interesting and it marks a milestone. It's the first time since the adoption of the Paris Agreement that countries have put forward and submitted new or updated nationally determined contributions to the UNFCCC as part of the five-year ambition raising cycle of the Paris Agreement. In addition, a key goal of the upcoming 26 uh, conference of the parties to the UNFCCC is to uh, ensure global net zero emissions by around the middle of the century and to keep 1.5 degrees uh, achievable. Against this background, the presentation zooms in on three critical, critical questions. First of all, what are the implications of the new updated pledges for 2030 on 2030 emissions and on the emissions gap. Second, what do we know about the status of the net zero emission pledges and are these consistent with the shorter term plans and action for 2030? And finally, what are the implications for global warming at the end of the century? Starting with the new mitigation pledges, 121 parties had submitted new or updated nationally determined contributions at the end of the September, which is the cutoff date used in the report. These show greater transparency, they show greater coverage of sectors and gases, and they also show enhanced ambition. However, it's far from sufficient to bridge the emissions gap. If we look at the submitted nationally determined contributions and other announced mitigation pledges by major emitters, the combined effect of those is to lower global emissions in 2030 by about 4 gigatons of CO2 equivalents. By comparison, to bridge the gap, emissions would have to be lowered by 11 to 13 gigatons of CO2 equivalents for a 2 degrees pathway and by 25 to 28 gigatons of CO2 equivalents for 1.5 degree pathways. Put differently, the ambition displayed by the new pledges would have to be increased by four times to get on track to two degrees and by more than seven times to get on track to 1.5 degrees. Turning to the issue of net zero emissions, science tells us that to, have to reach 1.5 degrees, CO2 emissions globally need to be net zero around 2050, with total greenhouse gas emissions reaching net zero about 15 to 20 years later. A promising sign and a promising development is the increasing number of countries and parties that have put forward net zero emission pledges by, net, by the middle of the century. By now, 50 parties covering more than half of total global greenhouse gas emissions have firmly pledged such, such targets. However, they still show some ambiguities in terms of sector coverage and gas coverage. And what's more important, only few of the available net zero targets are yet backed up by credible plans and actions for 2030 that provide confidence that net zero emissions can ultimately be achieved. Many countries are still pursuing a delayed pathway, which means that their emissions are increasing until 2030. So what does this imply for global warming? Global warming at the end of the century is estimated at 2.7 degrees Celsius if all unconditional pledges are fully implemented and continued over the course of the century. If in addition, all the conditional pledges are also fully implemented, this temperature projection is lowered by 0.1 degrees Celsius. The big difference is if in addition, the, uh, the net zero emission targets are also fully achieved, in which case global warming is estimated to land at about 2.2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. The findings of the Emissions Gap 2021 reiterate the urgent need for enhanced ambition and accelerated action to bridge the Emissions Gap in 2030 and to put global emissions on a pathway towards net zero that is consistent with achieving the temperature goal of the Paris Agreement. Thank you.